Faction name must be three characters long. How about faction? <laughs> so this is a, a light carrier with a capacity of four with the unusual talent of being able to handle multiplayer carriering. Now, as you know, the uh, legs, landing legs, explode violently in multiplayer. So you can't really land on carriers. What we've done instead is we've created our carrier bay out of rotors. So these sensors up here are set to have an exactly two meter front range, front extent, and that's exactly the range that is required to have these connect up. So once a ship moves into range, that automatically fires the attach on this rotor down here. Pretty straightforward, right? This is a 20,000 kilogram ultralight fighter, so um, be careful, it's a little bit zippy. <laughs> do I have the, uh, do I have enough space to turn around? Uh, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and turn around. Everything here is destructible. It hardly matters if anything dies. It's all easy blueprints. Okay. Okay, I have, uh, I have the, whatchamacallit, locked in. Oh, oh hey. Nope, you, bi I, uh, you missed by a little bit, so if you back up and try again, you'll probably catch it fine. There you go. Oh, yep, yep. Now what we're going to do is take a baseline. So we're going to go ahead and create a ship and dock it using landing legs. <laughs> okay. Well, this is going to end well. I hope, I hope it ends incredibly badly. I think you might get your wish. I never really talked about why landing legs blow up the way they do when I did my uh, simulation speed video. I think it, isn't it just because they apply a lot of force very, very rapidly? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a rubber banding thing. But because of the coarseness of the simulation, it keeps rubber banding back and forth, and about half the time, you end up with K greater than 1, which means you're picking up energy every time it rubber bands, and eventually it just explodes. Okay. Well, nobody tell the insurance adjusters. Here we go. I'm actually getting it uh, pretty stable on this side. Yeah, so am I. I'm not seeing any glitching on either of the ships. This world uh, might be this world might be too stable for um, for this test. Well, do you want me to try maneuvering? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and give it some maneuvering. Okay. And that was the last we ever saw of John. Oh, wait, here he comes. I don't see any sign that either of them are suffering undue stress. I mean, it's possible that they've gotten a little better about ignoring clearly bullshit packets, which would go a long ways towards solving the uh, landing gear problems. Well, I should have thought to bring along someone else's carrier. It may be that I have to scrap this episode just because the uh, landing gear is insufficiently destructive. <laughs> I'm really shocked at how well these ships are acting. Um, I, maybe this multiplayer carrier is not not necessary. Maybe uh, maybe the default carrier now works well enough to serve. Whoa! We nope. have something else. Nope. The <laughs> ship came off finally. After reviewing the footage, what we have here is not a landing gear failure, but a ship warping failure. It warped far enough to actually slam its underside into the deck, and that created enough force to set it free. Here you can see an intact landing leg and an exploded cargo bay. So that's what happened. It slammed itself into the deck, and that's what shook it free. The end result of this is a resounding failure. Um, this ship just did not explode. Okay, I have it spawned in. All right, everyone. This carrier was designed by John Brewer, who is a very, very different kind of designer than I am. Uh, he actually designs with uh, a heavy influence from real-world military vessels. Uh, as far as I can tell, all of your designs have that kind of influence, whether on yeah. purpose or not. <laughs>
I think it's more that I'm really influenced by sort of the ISO standard science fiction fleet. Oh, that might uh, be it. And, uh, and that's, in turn, influenced by real-world military designs. The problem with the bees is that they are 20,000 kilograms, which is really light. Um, and I'm a little bit worried that may end up making it difficult to knock them off. I suppose we'll find mm. out. Oh, I remember seeing the profile of this in one of your videos. Yeah, actually, in just about all of my weapons test videos, um, we fire whatever we're testing at the ship at some point. I find nowadays heavy armor is useless. But that's just me. And since I was also the guy who thought that multiplayer carriers were uh, useless... I am going to not crash into... Another 15 degrees would be fine. You're definitely within the box, and I don't think any of our ships exploded. Try spinning. I've definitely left the box at this point. Yeah, but you were within it for a good little bit. Now, we're not seeing any any problems here. I'm not seeing any shake in my uh, uh, in my screen. I think I think this was a bust. I don't know whether it was a bust because... Um, well, you want me to go grab my, my crappy laptop and try this again? Hey, I'm in World. Okay, so now John has just joined in, and for some reason he's pink. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Oh, yep, yeah. and okay. we have all the terrible performance we hoped for. <laughs> um, is that really uh, blue? Hello, everybody. So we're here with Super 07 and Brewer. Uh, hello, everybody. So we're here with Super 07 and Brewer. Bronzite. Uh, Brewer has a channel that you may have seen, and Super07 helped me out with some mods. Alright, John, let's go ahead and pull some maneuvers and see what we can do. Okay, throttling up! Okay. Looking pretty good. Alright, John, let's go ahead and pull some maneuvers and see what we can do. Okay, throttling up! Okay. Looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go make a close pass on an asteroid. Sounds good. So buzzing the asteroid will take us within the asteroid's bounding box, which will allow us to trigger extra physics calls. These physics calls will slow the game's processing down, and hopefully that will cause the game to... the lag to uh, shake off some of these ships. But if we can't get the default ships attached with landing legs to explode, then there's really no point in talking about the technique used to keep them from exploding because they're not exploding. Okay, we are in the bounding box. Yeah, I don't see any hints that anything is going to go wrong. Okay, we are in the bounding box. Yeah, I don't see any hints that anything is going to go wrong. <laughs> so, what we have here is a failure to explode. This is a sad day, but it is, a, it is something that's very welcome. If I don't have to use this pinhole technique to actually, to actually land ships and dock them, that means that we can use more conventional techniques, and that's a lot more straightforward. So, um, since we can't seem to get this to fail, no matter what we do, John and I tried for about half an hour beforehand, we might as well go ahead and finish up by shooting at each other a whole bunch. Do you feel up to that, John? Sure, we can do that. Um, did, did you want to switch back to your actual machine, or are you happy doing it on your lag machine? Uh, whee! Um, okay, I think I just clipped out... Yep, I just clipped out of the uh, ship when I exited. That's my, uh, something that normally doesn't happen. That's a good sign. It means that the ship is lagging, but unfortunately it means that the... Uh, uh, devices, uh, sorry, the ships that are attached should be exploding and aren't. So I think maybe they fixed something. Yeah, it, it's really looking like uh, that is, uh, the, this ship is doing much better than it has any right to be.
And that was a sample from the upcoming Skunk Work Fighter episode. I hope you look forward to it. We will be talking about blowing up tiny, tiny ships.